we were getting a morning workout in and we're keeping up with Rogue. So we thought we'd touch base with you guys on why we're not at Rogue. We're also gonna break down a longer EMOM style workout and some things that you can do to adjust that to make it appropriate for you. So why are we not at Rogue? <laughs> well, typical Chrissy style. I actually agreed to go when I got the invite. I think some of you probably saw that on my Instagram. And then I started training and then I decided I wasn't going. Uh, I did that a couple years back with the Dubai Invitational. I booked my flights and then I canceled them less than 24 hours later. So it seemed like a good idea, but as I got back into training, it was just, I wasn't ready. And I've done it since it started. So this would have been my fourth year at the Rogue Invitational. And it's one of the best, if not the best competition all year. It's so much fun. The venue is amazing. The girls are awesome. The workouts are great. But when I started to get back into training, I just felt like I wasn't gonna be ready, not fit wise, but mentally and my body. And so I just needed a break. I know you guys are probably like, you didn't take a break, you ran a marathon, but that felt like a break to me. So we are back to training and just kind of getting ready, but taking a true off season to also work on some of those weaknesses and just let my mind and my body feel really good. In the earlier stages of, of an athlete's career in CrossFit, I think it's really important to get a lot of competition experience because that goes a long way. The longer you've been in the sport, I think the less important those things can be, where you've learned a lot of those lessons and it becomes more important to take an actual off season to let your body recover from the volume. And coming from the games, it is a really short turnaround. I think it's about eight weeks from the CrossFit Games to Rogue. And Christy can handle the volume. I think most athletes can handle the volume at this point. But giving your mind the ability to take time off uh, to where you can be excited to train again is a really important factor when you're considering which competitions to do. And we've been at Rogue. Rogue is super fun. I think the baseball stadium is probably one of my favorite CrossFit venues that we've been to. It was great for the spectators. It was great for us as athletes and coaches. But this year, it's nice to just kind of watch from the sidelines, enjoy, and uh, kind of give the body and mind a rest. First session is in the garage this morning. We're gonna have a nice good warm up followed by a little bit of weightlifting, a long EMOM, so it's gonna be 40 minutes of a lot of different stuff and then an accessory piece. This is pretty much how we structure our programs on IVIX training uh, and we always do those workouts, but you're always gonna have some sort of warm up, usually a strength or a skill a workout and then an optional accessory on the IVIX 60 program. If we're doing comp, there's usually a little bit more volume. So I'm starting with a 20 second bike followed by five barbell good mornings, five behind the neck barbell snatch grip push press, five air squats or five overhead squats. And I'm gonna go two rounds of that or for about three minutes. I've already done some of my banded pull apart, some of my other accessory movements just to make my, sure my personal body is nice and warm. We got some snatches on the menu this morning. It's early, it's like seven o'clock. So to be kind to our neighbors, we've got our crash pads out. If it's summer and like middle of the day, we will drop the barbells just on the floor. It's fairly loud, but it's reasonable during the day. If it's early in the morning or anything like that, we'll get the crash pads out because it makes a huge difference uh, for noise for our neighbors. So it's not as noticeable what we got going on in here. Milo's hanging out, he's playful this morning. Um, we got some snatches, it's gonna be snatch, hang snatch. Uh, since we're using the crash pads, <laughs> since we're using the crash pads, I'm gonna go on one side of them, Chrissy's gonna go on the other, and we'll alternate. She go, you go, I go. one snatch into one hang snatch. We did power snatch into hang squat snatch. We like putting the power snatch up front because it just helps you focus on extension. So I'm thinking about opening my hips and driving the bar overhead because I don't have the squat and the time to get underneath of the bar. So I have to be really aggressive with my extension. 
So we like that because then when we get to our hip squat snatch, it's gonna already prime us to make sure we're opening our hips, which is gonna give us a lot more time to get under the barbell now that we are squatting. That's one of our favorite combos that we like to put together. And for me, it's really helped my snatch. Both Patrick and I, I worked to about 78% today. He worked up to about 81%. Up next, we've got a 40 minute EMOM or every two minutes. We've got two minute blocks for a total of 40 total minutes. Um, I tested out the movements and rep schemes for this a couple days ago, and Christy and I are gonna give this whole thing a run through, make sure it feels appropriate and manageable for the entire time frame. Once we get done with this, we're gonna give you guys some tips on how you can take something like this and make it appropriate for you to make sure that you're getting the right stimulus out of it and not just chasing either the reps or the time. That was really hard. Uh, and the workout that we put up on Ibex of the day was the one that we did or the reps in the uh, time frame. And that would probably be honestly the RX plus version. The first round is manageable, but to maintain that for 40 minutes is pretty challenging. For those of you that can't see it, Milo's down below looking at my legs right now. So if you're wondering what my facial expression was about. Yeah, he's exactly right. And there's a couple different ways. I like cutting the reps. And I think for an EMOM like this, that's really what you should be doing instead of saying, oh, I'm just gonna work for a minute and a half out of the two minutes. Because then sometimes you just kind of let the clock run out and you don't really hold yourself accountable. Where maybe you just weren't warmed up for that first round, so you set the bar lower than you should have. So if you're only working for that 90 second window. So I really like for this one, for instance, modifying maybe the burpees to four burpee box jumps and the wall balls to eight and doing two rounds of four and eight instead of five and 12. Same thing for DT, dumbbell DT. That one was pretty good, but if you felt like you were getting close on the clock, doing 12, eight, four instead of 12, nine, six, and kind of just setting those reps to where it's something you can work super hard at within that two minute window. You know you can get that work done. Even as you get more fatigued, it may get harder, but you're still gonna get it done and you're gonna hold yourself accountable. Yeah, so I mean, the idea is to work for the 40 minutes. We'd rather, like if we're gonna do something like this, not cut the time frame short. We wanna get that 40 minutes of work in. That's what we're looking for. But we also wanna be sure that we're getting that 30 or so seconds of rest. So if that means that we're cutting things down a little bit to make sure that we're fulfilling that time frame and getting the intention. What's up, dude? You're we're sweaty sweat. if you can't tell. <laughs> uh, hey, bud, you being needy? Okay, so for our accessory, today is a longer day, so 40 minute EMOM, which means maybe this is optional for you if you have the time. We're gonna do three sets, needing a bench, uh, eight to 12 flies. So typically we go reverse fly, but today we're gonna be laying on our back and we're gonna be squeezing our pecs as we bring those dumbbells to the center and then letting them fall back. So we're working our pectoral and our chest muscles. Then from there, we're gonna go eight to 12 dumbbell lat pullovers. So for this, we wanna anchor our back down, keep our rib cage down, and then we're gonna let our dumbbell pull our arm over as long as we possibly can, and then use our lats to get the dumbbell back over our eyes. Eight to 12 reps there. And then from there, we're gonna go 12 to 15 front plate raises to work our front delt. Focus on a moderately heavy weight, but we want to get through all reps without having to set that plate down. So that's how you're going to choose your weight. Rest as needed between sets, rest minimally between exercises. Just want to say good luck to all the competitors finishing out their weekend at the Rogue Invitational. It's been so much fun to watch. I did have a little foot bit of FOMO, especially when it came to the trail run, but it's been nice to train and also take a little bit of off season. My body is thanking me as well as my mind. So if you like more videos like this, where we're showing you kind of the workouts that we're doing, giving you a little strategy, helping you figure out how to modify if you need to, please drop that below in the comments. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Get after it, get a good workout in today and have some fun. Oh, 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 oh.